guys, it's your girl M, and I'm back with another video for you today. And today we are getting into The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 13, Episode 3 Recap. Okay, of course Poseidon decides to get his bone literally right as I start doing this video. So if you hear him in the background, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so this episode basically revolves around Sutton's magic mic meltdown. That's what I'm calling it. And she goes off the rails. Like that, that there's no way around it. She goes off the rails. But uh, there's so much more to talk about in this episode. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I took plenty of notes. I've been trying to... I, I took so many because there were a lot of little things that I wanted to kind of talk about. So this might end up being like a longer recap video. So I hope you guys uh, strap in, grab yourself some water, get comfortable because we've got a lot to talk about. So we open up the episode and they had just got to Vegas and uh, Garcelle's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go meet men. And Erica's like, oh, okay, all right, let's go. And I want to say something about this hotel room. I looked it up because they are staying at the Resorts World Hotel in Las Vegas. And it's like a new hotel. And they're staying in this palace suite. Do you know how much money it costs to stay in one of those palace suites? Fifth $15,000 a night. $15,000 a night. Nuts. Nuts. It's a gorgeous hotel room though. Gorgeous. But I think when I looked on the website, it was, um, I think it's three king beds and two queen beds or something like that. It's a four bedroom suite. There's like a media room. There's there's so much. I hope they show more of the suite as like we go on, but stunning. And it better be for $15,000 a night. And that's where the prices start. It didn't give me a definitive answer as to which, as to if that suite was the one that was 15K or if it's more, but it starts at 15,000 a night. That's just nuts to me. Marcel decides that she wants to have a dating intervention with Sutton. Now I just got done talking about Robin's intervention in Real Housewives of Potomac and now we're gonna talk about Sutton's dating intervention because my girl is a one date wonder, okay? And we need to we need to crack the code, we need to figure out what's going on. So we find out that Sutton had a great first date with this guy and then literally after that invited him to fly to New York with her to go to this gala and he was just like, no, <laughs> it just, didn't call back. Um, and then also she like texted him and complimented his triceps and the women are all confused. It's so funny. And I loved this scene because it was just girls being girls, you know, just like, you know, make kind of picking fun at each other, but you know, wanting to support each other. It just was so fun and light. Like, a lot of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills episodes can be kind of heavy and dark. And this is what I like to see. This is the kind of like sisterhood, girlhood, uh, girls being girls uh, type of content I like to see. You know, they're just like making fun of Sutton and her inability to date. And it's just hilarious to me. Uh, and um, Kyle actually also, I wanted to... I wanted to make a note of it. Like Kyle looks amazing. Like Kyle is looking stunning these days. I don't know what it is. She's wearing like less makeup. She just looks great. I, I think she looks amazing. Um, and then Kyle takes uh, Sutton's phone and like FaceTimes the guy and it's this whole thing. It's just this melt, like it's hilarious. I love it. Uh, and then Kyle and Garcelle are just like laughing and like she can't be taught because Sutton is just too far gone. Like she's just bad at dating, like so, so bad at it. Uh, and then we go to the ladies are going to start getting ready to go see Magic Mike and Doree and Kyle talk about how Crystal brought glam and they didn't bring glam. And there's, you know, there's a rumors a swirling on Twitter that the reason Doree did not bring glam on this Las Vegas trip is because she really is struggling with money because we've heard there's a lot of rumblings about Doree's finances. I mean, there always has been and probably always will be. 
But the fact that Dori didn't bring glam is kind of telling. Now, I don't know if I for sure believe it all. I don't know, but it does make sense. It does track that Dori wouldn't bring glam because Bravo does not pay for the glam teams or anything like that. So Dori would have to pay whatever rate her glam team costs. And then she would also have to pay for their rooms at, at the Las Vegas hotel. And she would also have to pay for their transfer, transportation and everything. So it is kind of interesting that she, you know, she's cut, cutting back. She's not spending as much money? I don't know. I don't know. That's just what's been kind of floating around. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, and then we go to a scene, and I kind of want to give Sutton the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know. Um, she can't find her pants in the closet. And so she texts her assistant, Avi, and he comes into the room, and Garcelle's kind of like, you know, the pants are there, it's fine, whatever. And she warns Avi when he gets to the room, she's like, watch out, like, be careful. And Garcelle like, makes a comment, like, I hope he gets paid a lot. And Avi finds the pants in like 2.5 seconds. And Sutton is just like, she's being kind of rude. And I don't know if she's trying to like have a sense of humor about it. Or, cause sometimes with Sutton, her jokes don't land. Her humor doesn't land always. So, I don't know if she was just being flippant or if she was actually just like being a dick. I don't know. Um, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. But it did rub me the wrong way that she was like treating her personal assistant kind of in a rude way. I don't know. Um, but then Avi like runs away. They cut to the scene. Like it's so funny. Like they, they kind of have their like little dust up and then she makes Avi leave and then you just cut to the scene of like Avi running down this hallway like running away. I'm telling you, Steven Spielberg could not direct Housewives. He he couldn't. He he doesn't see the vision. He wouldn't see it. I, I, I loved it. All the glam squads arrive. We see Crystal. She has this beautiful like bejeweled crystal out Valentino clutch that she splurged on for her birthday. It was a $6,100 bag. So quite a splurge, but you know, hip hop Rob, her husband, he's got money. He was the director of the original Lion King. So they're good. Um, and they're all getting ready for Magic Mike. We see Sutton and she apparently has been carrying around ocean spray grapefruit juice in her purse. That's what she does. She carries ocean spray grapefruit juice in her purse wherever she goes. She makes the comment about Beyonce having hot sauce in her purse and Sutton has grapefruit juice in hers, which is interesting. Um, Sutton is talking about wearing pants and she's wearing the pants because if she, she wants to go on stage at Ma Magic Mike. She doesn't really like wearing pants. She's in Vegas, she wants to wear a dress, but she wants to go on stage at Magic Mike and it would be better for her to wear pants so, you know, she's not flashing the audience, you know? And then we see Erica, she is in latex again. The girl knows how to put on a latex outfit better than anybody I've ever seen. Um, Sutton has a bunch of ones in her hand. She's talking about how she's, you know, she was like, ladies, have you, see, have you, do you remember seeing ones? Cause all these women have money and credit cards and stuff. So I don't think a lot of them have seen ones in a while. Um, and then we find out that Erica is the one that got them hooked up to go to this Magic Mike show because her, uh, I don't know what Mikey Minden is to her. He's like her creative director. He's like her, like very close personal friend too. Um, his partner Davis is a part of the Magic Mike crew. He's like one of the dancers. So, um, and then she knows a lot of the guys that are on the Magic Mike show that are in it. Um, and so she decides that she wants to do this for Crystal's birthday. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then, they get to Magic Mike, and it's so funny. Doree is taking so many pictures and videos. Like, I'm living for it. And Kyle goes, Doree, stop, stop zooming in so much. It's hilarious. And we start to kind of see, like, Sutton is, like, excited. Like, there's, like, this buildup. She gets excited. But then once they get to Magic Mike, I think as everything happens, and I think she's, like, her buzz is really starting to kick in, we start to see her get upset. 
And we're like, Sutton, like, why are you so upset? Like, you were so excited about this magic mic thing. Like, what's going on? And we see Garcelle gets a lap dance, which is funny. Um, and then Erica and Crystal go on stage. And Sutton doesn't go on stage. And so we're thinking like, oh, Sutton is upset that she's not getting to go on stage. She wore pants and she didn't get to go on stage. And then while we're watching, like you just kind of start to see her like descend into this like uncomfortable, like guard back up, like I need to be a Southern bet. Like it, it's crazy the 180 she does, but you do see like she's all excited and then all of a sudden she's just like starting to not have a good time. And I think in my opinion, I think she just started to get uncomfortable. I don't know if she really understood what Magic Mike was going to be like, but I think she does. So I, I don't know. I really honestly don't know why she got so upset. I don't. And then we cut to Erica spread eagle, the Magic Mike dancer, his face is in her crotch. And that is like the last straw for for Sutton, she gets up and she leaves. And Doria's like, do you want me to follow you? And Sutton goes, no. But then Garcelle ends up following Sutton. And she's like trying to make sense of everything. She doesn't understand, you know, why Sutton has, you know, walked off. And then Kyle ends up going on stage. And she gets whipped cream all over her body. And the like Magic Mike dancer is like licking the whipped cream off of her body. And so then we see her, she comes after she gets like the whipped cream, she was gonna go to the bathroom and she was like cleaning up what remained of the whipped cream. And she sees Sutton and Garcelle talking and Sutton keeps going on about like, I'm a part of the ballet foundation. She's just saying like, it's a bad look for her. She didn't like it, all this stuff that she holds herself to this high standard. And really Garcelle and Kyle are like, is that the reason or is it that you didn't get to go on stage and you wore these ugly pants and like it's becoming a huge thing when it doesn't need to be. So, and then Kyle like tells her about the whipped cream and Sutton's like, oh, well that's funny, that's silly, that's goofy. She just really, I guess, did not like the guy's face in Erica's crotch, but it's like, who cares? Like, it's not your crotch. What does it matter? Kyle and Garcelle are still like just thinking it's the pants. And then the Bravo producers show flashbacks of the night showing Sutton talk about the pants. Like I'm wearing pants. I got ones. I like, it's all about these pants. And that's what they're like, that's what they're thinking it is. Like she didn't get to go on stage. She wore those pants for nothing. That's the reason Sutton is so upset. But Sutton is like not playing ball like she's like no I just don't like seeing my friends up there like that and it's like girl come on we we know why you're upset it's about these damn pants um Kyle texts them uh texts the other ladies Doree and Crystal and Erica are having a great time they're watching this like acrobatic part of the show and Doree and Erica are like oh it's so beautiful it's so they're they're having the times of their life they're enjoying it and Crystal leaves because um, Kyle sent the text, like, we have to leave, Sutton's upset. So Crystal leaves, but they decide, Doree and Erica decide to stay back because Erica's like, I wanna see my friend, like, I'm, I'm staying. Garcelle and Kyle and Sutton are making their way to the Sprinter van. Sutton calls Kyle a bitch. Kyle calls her a bitch. They kind of get into it, but then, um, they get into the Sprinter van and Sutton then apologizes and, and Kyle's like, okay, I apologize too. Like, it is what it is. And then um, Erica and Doree, we, we go back to them and they are saying hi to the dancers and stuff. And, and the one friend of Erica's is like, thank you for staying because like they, they, you know, went all out for them and three of the people that were supposed to be seating in those seats like left mid show. So um, they were grateful that Erica and Doree stayed. Um, and then we get to Erica and Doree get to the Sprinter van and Erica says that she calls, she calls a, Sutton a sour push in, in Judge Judy. She was like, is a sour press in the, in the Sprinter van? And she's sitting there like Judge Judy and it's just so funny. Um, 
And then Sutton like kind of apologizes to Erica and they're all talking. They're on the Sprinter van. They're getting ready to go to dinner. And Sutton is like trying to explain herself, but she doesn't really know how to explain herself because she doesn't want to just admit that it's the pants and she's upset that she didn't go on stage. Like she's trying to make it into something else, but none of the women are buying it. Sutton keeps going on about the spread eagle crotch in the face and Erica's like, that's like one of my oldest friends. He's been a dance partner of mine forever. Like. I'm not offended or worried about it, so why are you? And then Doree calls Sutton out and is like, that's rude. And she does like this Southern accent. I love it when Doree does like this accent work that is just insane. And she goes, it's not very nice. And it's, <laughs> where's our manners? So like, it, it's just over the top and hilarious. Uh, and then Crystal goes like, well, we aren't upset or embarrassed. So like, why are you like, and I'm married. Like she's been married forever. Doree's been married forever. Kyle's been married forever. Like they're all on the stage and they don't care. And they're like, our husbands don't care either. So why are you so like bothered by it? Um, and then Garcelle makes this comment about Sutton and is like, Sutton had to have had sex. Like she has kids and then she was like, did Sutton have a store? Cause it's like Sutton is so acting like she's so buttoned up. It's like, girl, are you like, maybe she's just insecure because she's not getting laid at the moment. I don't know. I think it's a lot, a, lo a lot's going on in Sutton's brain and not a lot of it is making sense. And so they get to dinner. Garcelle is saying that she's going to have lunch with her son who lives in Vegas, her eldest son, Oliver, and Oliver is going through a divorce right now. And Garcelle opens up in her confessional is like, I don't really feel comfortable talking about my family or my children with these women, especially because of what happened last season when Erica told, um, I think it was Jax, she told Jax to fuck off when she was drunk. And so there's like a lot of hurt feelings there. And then like Dori and Kyle and Mauricio and PK were like kind of laughing about Erica doing that. And Garcelle is just like, even though they have apologized for it, she's still upset about it. And she doesn't really feel like opening up about her family to these women because she doesn't feel like it's a safe place. They start playing this like card game. It's like a spicy card game. Like what songs do you listen to during sex, whatever. Um, Kyle said something really funny. She was like, I was expecting Ky or Sutton to say that she has sex to the nutcracker. <laughs> like just because nobody can, Nobody can, can see Sutton as like a sexual creature. Like that's basically the bottom line of this whole thing. Like they just all think that Sutton is like the worst lay ever. And Erica like makes that comment. And then Erica also says that the biggest hoes are the ones that are like quiet about it. Um, and then we find out apparently Crystal has perfect nipples. She lets that be known. And Dari is like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And Crystal says, well, Dari hasn't seen a real body part in 10 years, which she clocked that. And then Sutton talks about these sex toys that she has a lot of sex toys. And Dari says, oh, hi, Dr. Jekyll and Miss Strack. Like, you never know what you're going to get with her. Like, is she a button up prude or is she a freak? Like, they don't know, like they don't, like Sutton is not making any sense <laughs> at all. Uh, and then we show the women going to bed, getting ready to go to sleep. They get back to the hotel after dinner, after Magic Mike, they're just kind of like, you know, getting ready for bed, having fun, sleepover party girl time. Uh, and then we find out in the morning, Kyle went to the gym at like 5.30 in the morning. She took her Birkin, her Birkin bag with her to the gym and Erica and Dory are kind of like making fun of her for that. And then they all have breakfast and Garcelle finally opens up and says that she doesn't feel comfortable talking about her children with the women. And most of the women like are understanding what she's saying. And Garcelle's like, I'm not saying like, I'm gonna feel like this forever. Like I, I understand that you apologize, but like for now I want to kind of protect my family and keep my wall up. And all the women are getting it, Kyle's getting it, but Doree is like, that's so disrespectful to think that I would uh, be rude to your children or that I am not being sincere. And it becomes this kind of whole thing. And when really all Doree ha would have to say is like, I'm sorry that you feel like that. Um, what can I do to help build trust? You know, things like that. But Doree just immediately gets defensive and Kyle's kind of like, Doree, like, calm down, like, you don't have to get so defensive, like, 
you know, she's just, she's just saying how she feels and Garcelle's upset that like, they're not listening to how she's feeling. Like they're just like getting judgmental and defensive. And um, that's kind of where we end. And then Garcelle's like a little bit teary eyed and she, you know, decides that she's gonna get ready and go take a shower and stuff. So that's where they end it off on the episode. I'm sure we're gonna get more of it next week. In next week's episode, that will be episode number four. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I love how we're getting into like light drama. It's fun. It's, you know, I love this cast. I think The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is doing just fine without Lisa Rinna. I did like Rinna, but you know, I'm not really missing her this season. So uh, I'm excited for next week. I'm excited to keep seeing how this season's gonna go. Um, in the previews for next, the next episode, we see uh, Gar uh, not Garcelle, uh, Sutton and Kyle kind of get into it. They go to this like cowboy bar thing. I don't know, we've got, we've got a lot to come. It's still so early in the season, so I'm excited. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below. Uh, let me know what you're thinking about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this season. What are you liking? What, what do you think about uh, Sutton's Magic Mike moment, her little meltdown? What do you think was the cause of it? Let me know. Uh, check out my Twitter at Amman Man and my Instagram at Midwest Mansfield. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love and appreciate every last one of you, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah, mwah, mwah.